Hey folks, Malforan here. Welcome back to the channel. Today we're doing something a little bit different. We're talking about Crusader Kings 3, but a, uh, a kind of free update that was released recently, which I think a lot of people aren't aware was actually added to the game. So in patch 1.6.1, Paradox added a lot of updates to the Canary Isles, which is over here on the west coast of, uh, of Africa, these islands over here. I think mainly these two, although it, it does count this one as part of it, so I guess... I guess it is. I never realized that one, to be honest. But uh, yeah, these are the main idols, and then obviously this tiny one up here as well. And uh, yeah, they added a new culture, a new religion, a new decision, and uh, some new buildings as well for the island. So I think it'll just make a really cool campaign. If you're looking for something new to play, something a little bit different to what maybe you usually play, there's uh, basically a like a mini free DLC for these islands, which which is awesome, to be honest. It came out of nowhere and uh, really fun. So we're just gonna cover basically what the changes were and then uh, let me know in the comments if, you, if you've if you done the campaign, how did it work out for you? Or, uh, you know, if you're excited for it, uh, let me know and we'll, uh, we'll have a chat about it down there. But uh, yeah, we're just gonna run through the things. So the first thing is a new culture. So they've got a new culture, the, the, the Goanchi culture, definitely butchering the name, but uh, anyway, these are the, this is the new culture here. Now, one thing before we get onto the first thing here, before I forget is, this starts obviously with a bunch of different uh, tribal innovations in, in 867, which is where we're looking at the moment. But the cool one it starts with is West African canoes. So you can actually raid from, from these islands and obviously it gives you a raid speed increase and an embarkation cost decrease because obviously you're going to be leaving the islands unless you're playing super tall and just never leave, which you could do, I suppose, but it'd be probably pretty boring, but <laughs> it is a chance. But uh, yeah, they start with this. So you could start here and kind of like a West African Vikings playthrough where you just go raiding around the, uh, around Iberia, around Africa, even up, you know, into, into Italy and things like that. Steal lots of money and prestige, and then use that to build up the lands within your realm and then um, you know keep progressing that way. Definitely with all these updates, they've created a cool way to play tall on the islands and then use your influence and uh, tech and things like that to kind of progress out however you want to do that. But uh, yeah, I just wanted to highlight that they start with West African canoes because it's pretty, pretty rare up here. I think West African canoes is generally just down here somewhere. So uh, yeah, you can start here and just go raiding to your heart's content. But uh, yeah, the other bits for the culture is they're stalwart, stalwart defenders. So you get um, buff for defensive wars. You gain a lot of extra prestige and gold, 100% of each more from defensive wars. And then you get plus five defender advantage and then your garrisons are 25% larger as well. So if I guess you're getting attacked a lot, especially when you've initially expanded out, you uh, you get a lot of advantage for, for being defensive uh, in those wars. Well, not being defensive, but defending your lands rather than attacking somebody else's. Then they've got mystical ancestors, cannot disinherit dynasty members. So I know that will put off some people immediately, but <laughs> it is there. Gain renown when granting titles to house members and lose piety when revoking titles from house members and plus 10 dynasty opinion. And then the ice isolationists, which makes sense. They're on these islands here. Idle courtiers are less likely to become wanderers. Marriage exceptions towards other cultures, minus 50%. Very unlikely to marry outside their own culture. So. You know, it's very, uh, we're on the islands. We want to keep the islanders together. Very hard to kind of intermix things later on. As a player, you can probably do it a little bit easier because you can focus on just getting those modifiers. But the AI, I would imagine, would generally just keep within their own culture for the, uh, for the, for the course of the campaign. And uh, yeah, diplomatic range minus 25%. So they also can't interact with people further away than people usually can. Same culture opinion plus five. Kind of feel like that should be higher, to be honest, for isolationists. Plus five when everything's built so you only interact with your own culture as much as possible. I think plus five should be at least like plus 15 or 20. I guess it may be too easy to be super stable, but again, that's that's kind of the point. But uh, yeah, it is plus five. And then control growth, 0.5 a month. So yeah, if you do take lands or you do get siege down, you can build up that control a little bit faster. So that's the, the culture, like I said, pretty nice. Starts with a Berber language, Berber heritage, and uh, yeah, not too bad. I don't think as a, as a culture, kind of interesting the uh, traditions they have. And then obviously, like I said, starting with the canoes is pretty cool. The next thing is the religion, Akamanism. Again, definitely butchering the name, but it is a unreformed North African faith. You begin with volcanic veneration, convert faith in county speed in mountainous terrain plus fifty percent, promote culture of the same faith, mountainous terrain plus fifty percent. And then uh, also reduces the f the chance of other faiths converting your uh, places. 
and uh, yeah, makes giant a virtue, which is pretty cool. You're on an island, get a bunch of giants, <laughs> mythical place, and all that good stuff. And then the um, people who follow this religion also get additional bonuses in mountains, which is kind of funny because looking at the map, this isn't actually mountains. This is all hills, and a lot of the land nearby is hills. But uh, yeah, they're all mountain based uh, bonuses so um, anyway when you are expanding out you get those cool bonuses sacrificial ceremonies so obviously if you're if you are going raiding capturing people you can then execute them and gain piety instead of spending piety so um, that'd be uh, pretty cool also short reign duration minus 50 percent which is um, kind of interesting I never noticed that was a bonus for being sacrificial ceremonies but uh, there you go it is and then megalithic constructions this is the new one that they've also put in as part of this update so this allows you to build megaliths in temple holdings and great megaliths in dutch capitals and then it also obviously gives bonuses for this religion development growth in hills plus 15 percent which is quite a lot especially stacked with the megaliths which i'm going to show you in a second holding taxes in hills plus 10 percent levy size in hills plus 30 percent and then advantage in hills plus five percent so it's definitely focused on having hills and mountains being on the islands and things like that and then obviously if you go into south uh, the south area of Spain and the south bit of uh, West Africa, there's a lot of hills and mountains. So you could spread into either of those directions and really get some cool bonuses, especially the development growth is pretty good. And the megaliths, I can't show you them in game because I don't actually have an eligible place, but I'll put a screenshot on the screen at the moment. But uh, as you can see, they basically give you a bunch of monthly development, obviously increasing as you build the upgrades, and then also some piety as well and popular opinion. So you can see these development growths like development growth in hills plus 15 percent plus if you maxed out one of these megaliths another 15 percent 30 percent more development if you're a uh, a uh, stewardship focused character you could obviously get other boosts for development and uh, you as you can see you could play tall as this nation and just go crazy you do have such a massive improvement development on the surrounding areas i think it'd be pretty interesting to play through obviously that development gives you more soldiers more taxes also helps with innovation research i believe um off the top of my head pretty sure it does someone will correct me in the comments if i'm wrong there but uh, having high development uh, assists with that as well so you can get a really nice advantage in tech and then obviously have those bonuses against the nations around you as well so yeah the megaliths look pretty pretty cool so uh, you know you can build these get even more bonuses and those those bonuses help with the other bonuses that you get so all in all pretty nice uh, sins are deceitful craven and arbitrary and virtues are honest brave just and obviously giants which as we've seen already you get the plus one piety and the plus 10 opinion and then obviously the other bonuses for being a giant anyway so uh, yeah you could build a crazy giant uh, culture religion down here if you wanted to so that's the culture and religion which is pretty cool oh actually the other thing with religion is the holy sites so i forgot to look at those so you have the the two you basically have over here which gives you piety per dread and development growth on hills plus 25 percent as i was saying in the previous bit you already have the development growth bonus for the uh for the religion from the tenant and then for building the megaliths and then if you ho if you have mount tiaid you get another 25 percent. so as you can see the development is just nuts so uh yeah really interesting how you could do that and then you have madeira which gives you plus 20 percent naval speed which isn't super good but again you're gonna be sailing around a lot so i guess it's actually pretty useful uh, you obviously get those raids finished a little bit faster and all that good stuff and then coastal advantage plus five obviously going to be doing a lot of coastal battles i would imagine so uh, yeah nice little bonus and then the rest of them one of them is over here in cartagena which gives you uh, men at arms maintenance per dread minus 0.2 percent which obviously um i think dread goes to 100 so 20 percent reduction in men at arms maintenance which is nice and title creation costs minus 15 percent which again just saves you some money which is uh, it's always welcome and then carthage is the next one gives you plus five natural dread so if you have cartagena and carthage you're just automatically saving some maintenance cost anyway even if you don't play a dread character you're automatically saving some and then the last one is all the way over here in alexandria which i didn't realize i was looking around the map like where's the fifth one yeah it's all the way over here for some reason i guess historically it makes sense and uh, that gives you learning per level of devotion plus two which obviously with other bonuses you can get for learning level is uh, quite a lot of extra learning you can get which again you could focus on the different bonuses the the trees in learning give you and you could just be you know spiraling your um 
stats a little bit out of control for your for your uh, counties i believe anyway and uh, yeah the last thing is there is a new decision as well which is consolidate the canaries since time immemorial each of the islands has called himself a kingdom but now horizons have broadened and the world is beginning to unfold itself to the canaries at last it is time for these many kingdoms to be united under one crown so you basically just you, um take all the lands here and then do this you get the kingdom of canarius whereas at the moment it is a part of a different kingdom so you actually carve it out make your own kingdom you get a primary title all the lands become the du jour vassal of the kingdom and you also gain 750 prestige which is okay it's nothing crazy but it's a nice little bonus it's not too hard to get you basically just need to own all the canaries which is i believe if uh yeah all these islands here so uh, it's not crazy difficult you do need to become feudal though so you do have to work towards becoming a feudal realm so uh, a nice little campaign kind of all works in together you have the unreformed religion get that reformed by getting the third holy site over here it's probably the easiest one to get and then use that to reform the religion get feudal and then use all the bonuses to kind of build up those buildings get even better and then use that to then expand further from west africa but yeah i just thought i kind of showed off to you guys and i saw on reddit and a few other places that people hadn't realized this was added it was easy to miss if you don't read the patch notes or uh, watch the dev diaries or anything like that it's pretty easy to miss that it was added so uh, yeah it looks like a cool campaign so let me know in the comments down below as i said if you have done this campaign if you are going to do it anyway we're going to be leave it there for today if you've enjoyed the video hit the like button if you're new to the channel this is your first video if you subscribe i cover crusader kings and then i play other grand strategy games as well on the channel so if that's your kind of thing you know what to do but uh, yeah that's gonna be it for today and i'll see you the next one